Hi, welcome back to another Heather Mac Reacts. Today we're going through some Am I the A-hole stories. And if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe because I post five times a week, every single week. And if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get into this first Am I the A-hole story. This says, am I the A-hole for dropping my daughter off at my mother-in-law's house and not picking her up when requested? I would have to say yes, because that is your child. That is your responsibility. Unless, of course, you literally dropped them off and said, hey, I have an hour long appointment. And 30 minutes in, they were like, you need to come get them. I mean, if you're in the middle of getting your nails done, if you're in the middle of getting your hair washed, if you're in the middle of a doctor's appointment, you can't just get up and, and, and walk out the door. So that I would understand. Otherwise, now nah, you're the a-hole. Let's get into the story. My daughter, Tamara, 14, has been going through a terrible phase at home. I, female 38, can do nothing right. All she does is argue with me and scream. I can relate to the arguing because all my four-year-old does is fucking argue. <laughs> Did I tell y'all how fucking sassy this boy is? Sorry to cut in here. But holy shit, I don't think I said this on camera, but everybody else in my life has heard this story. When I was at my final OB appointment, you know, postpartum, my doctor, who's, she was a nurse practitioner, but you know, we would just call her the doctor to make it easier. She was standing there talking to me about the wound that was still not healed and about the future of what I should continue doing and holding my baby Jay and loving on him. And my four-year-old ran past her and slapped her in the ass. I was like, oh my God, LJ, I'm going to freaking kill you. I'm like, I am so sorry. He slapped her ass. My doctor was like, ha ha, did you get me? You got me. And I was like, oh my God, thank you. Do you have kids? And you understand that you cannot control these freaking hellions. Anyway... It, it's rough out here. Let's get back to the story. She will not do her chores and she makes life harder for me and her little brother, 12. I was 14 once, so I remember what it was like to be that age. I am doing my best to just get her through this. I may not always do the best job or keep my cool with her, but I am trying. My husband is out of town right now. His mom, however, lives a couple of towns over and has decided to chime in. Tamara called her when I grounded her for skipping school and vaping weed with her degenerate friends i took away all her screen privileges except her laptop which she needs for school i am a dummy because she called her grandmother on it my mother-in-law helen is usually a level-headed woman so i have no idea why she has decided that her parenting advice is wanted or warranted at this time she said that i am being cruel to her poor baby girl and that i should not be trying to control her like this i said that i was punishing my daughter for unacceptable behavior and that's how i reprimanded my child was not her problem she countered with the fact that she raised four children all boys by the way that she did not have to punish this way i know her youngest was out of the house before smartphones so it's different my daughter came into the room while i was talking to helen and started screaming about what a terrible person i am and that she wants to move out as soon as she can helen said that none of her kids ever said that so she must be a better mother i asked her if she was serious and wanted to give it a shot Tamara jumped at the opportunity and begged her grandmother to take her. Helen agreed. I drove her to Helen's house and said I would come back when my husband gets home and we can talk. You think you got it all figured out? Go on. I dropped her off on Saturday three days ago. Helen started calling me on Sunday. I need to come get my daughter. Sorry, I can't. My son and I went to visit my folks for the week. I thought it would be a good opportunity to see my parents at their farm since my daughter hates it there away from her friends in the city. My parents also are also the last people on earth with dial-up internet. My son does not care because he gets to play with the horses. It is a little early yet for foals, but who knows? Helen asked me to please come get Tamara. She even called my husband he called me and i told him what was going on he said that if his mom had asked for it then she needed to follow through i love that guy i also fielded calls from her from my two sisters-in-law they asked me what was going on so i told them they asked if i was really going to leave tamra with our mother-in-law for another week i said that this is where she was staying unless they wanted to watch her they both noped out without suggesting i go get her tamra and helen each have their reasons for thinking i'm an asshole i do not think my daughter is am i the a-hole nah you told her she said give her to me i'm a better mother i can handle her i won't punish her like you will and so she gave you the daughter and then she went away she's not cutting the vacation short or bringing her to the farm that she doesn't like like 
go ahead and parent because you know so much. No, nope, not the a-hole, not the a-hole. Maybe they'll both learn a fucking lesson. Let's see what Reddit has to say. My mom tried this when my son was eight months and not sleeping more than two hours at a time. Apparently I didn't know what I was doing and it was dead easy to get babies to sleep. No one had colic in her day, it's just an excuse. So I let her have an overnight. She never mentioned it again and was so frazzled the next day she was basically shaking. I love when these moms seem to think they know everything. Next says, the same thing happened to my mom. I'm 39, but the story is still circulated in the family to this day. Apparently, I was a colicky baby too, and my grandparents thought my parents didn't know what they were doing, especially since I was the firstborn. So they took me for a day to prove a point. At like two or three in the morning, my parents received a phone call from my grandparents asking them to come and get me because they couldn't get me to stop crying. So maybe they don't know it all. I would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments and let's get on to the next story. This says, am I the a-hole for telling my wife to never volunteer me to help her family again? Um, I know my husband doesn't like being volunteered for things, so I kind of get it. Let's see what the story says. My wife, 38 female, and I, 39 male, have been married for eight years and have a four-year-old son. I feel you, bro. My wife's younger brother, Joe, and his girlfriend are moving into an apartment together at the beginning of June, but girlfriend's lease is up at the end of April, so she needed to move out of her place. But Joe currently lives in a studio apartment, so he doesn't have room for all her stuff. So they were going to move all of girlfriend's stuff into a storage unit for a month until they get their new place together. A little over a month ago, Joe had asked my wife if we would be able to help them move girlfriend's stuff, and she agreed. My mother-in-law was supposed to watch our son so we could both help help, but she fell ill and had to cancel. My wife suggested trying to get a babysitter for that day, but I didn't want to spend hundreds on a babysitter to help someone move. That's dumb and bringing a four-year-old with us would not be helpful to anyone. This turned into an argument between us because she said I should help them move while she watches our son since I'm stronger than she is and I know how to drive our truck with a trailer. I told her that she should help them and have them rent a U-Haul for the day. We compromised by telling Joe that I would help them, but they need to get a U-Haul instead of using our truck and trailer. Then the morning of the move this past Saturday, my wife told me that a friend of hers got sweet tickets through work to a hockey game for that day and invited them. Yes, sweet tickets to a playoff hockey game. She said she would be bringing our son since her friend was bringing her kids too. Great, so not only do I get stuck helping someone move, but my wife and son get to go have an amazing experience together that I miss out on. And yes, this was my son's first major sporting event and I was missing it. Y'all, my husband would be heartbroken. There is nothing he loves more besides his family than sports, all sports, hockey, baseball, basketball, football, all of it. And wouldn't you know it, Joe never got a U-Haul and his girlfriend wasn't even close to packed up and ready when I got there. I spent seven to eight hours and multiple trips back and forth helping them move. All the while, my wife is sending pictures to our family group chat of how much fun they're having at the hockey game. Literally, I would have walked out. I would have been like, no, I'm not doing this. <laughs> Sorry, tough nugs figure something out. It's not my problem. I, I, I don't know you. It's not my problem. Maybe you do know them. I don't care. I don't know them. So it's not my problem. <laughs> when everyone was home that night, my wife was surprised that I wasn't in a good mood. She said that I acted like I barely cared about when our son was telling us about the hockey game and how much fun it was. I asked her if she was seriously confused about why I was upset and she told me to tell her. You asked. So I started railing off all the reasons I had to be pissed off. She volunteered me to help. She got to spend the day doing something very special with our son that I missed out on. Her brother and his girlfriend were not prepared and I had spent the entire day doing manual labor. I ended my little rant by telling her that she is never going to volunteer me to help her family ever again. She told me I was over overreacting and I can't hold it against her that her friend invited them to a game. She also said I'm not being fair by blaming her for Joe and his girlfriend. We'll see if you hadn't volunteered him, he wouldn't have been in this situation. I, never would I say, yeah, sure, my husband will do that. I mean, for like a thing like that, like if it's like, oh, uh, can you carry my suitcase up the stairs? Yeah, yeah, my husband will get that. No problem. Fucking seven to eight hours of manual labor on his day off? <laughs> Absolutely not. I would not want him to do that. I would not let him do that. And he would not want to do that. I say you are not the a-hole. That is 
the nicest thing you probably could have responded to her with. Let's see what Reddit has to say. Jeez, not the a-hole. Then they quoted, she told me I was overreacting and I can't hold it against her that her friend invited them to the game. You're not holding it against her that her friend invited them to the game. That's ridiculous. You're upset while she volunteered. You're in, you're upset that while she volunteered and strong armed you into doing this favor, she apparently was having a grand old time. How callous do you have to be to not only continuously send pictures of their good time while you're stuck doing something she made you do, but then pretend you're upset because she was invited by a friend. I'm guessing you couldn't care less that she was invited. I'm guessing what actually hurts is her blatant disregard for your time and energy. On top of that, missing your sons first like that. They also quoted, she also said that I'm not being fair by blaming Joe for and his girlfriend. And the commenter says, remind me who volunteered you for the job? Pretty sure it was you, bitch. I say you're not the a-hole. I would like to know what you all think about this one in the comments and let's get on to the next story. This says, am I the a-hole for telling my dad and stepmom their home isn't my home? Those are serious words. Let's get into the story. My parents had me and pretty soon after they divorced. My parents divorce was not amicable. I, 16 female, don't know all the details obviously, but I know that bad blood exists on both sides. And if you want my suspicions, I think they divorced so badly because my dad wanted to set up his own business, but my mom didn't want that to happen right after me. My dad owns his own business. Actually, he owned two and the first one he had to close up. The first one he started right right after the divorce, which is why I suspected what I suspect what I do. My dad also complained once or twice that my mom never supported him. So there are issues between my parents. When I'm with my mom, you would never know it. She does not vent about my dad, badmouth him, or try to hide the fact they were married and had me together. She has some photos of us because the divorce before the divorce in our living room among the rest of the family photos. And while I have issues with my stepdad and he's not my favorite person ever, he has never complained or tried to erase the fact he married a woman who had a kid with someone else. He never got that part wrong despite our issues. But my dad's house is so very different. It got worse after he married my stepmom. I'm not supposed to mention my mom at all. They don't let me have anything there that my mom bought, even my favorite plushie that my mom bought me as an infant. I can't have a single photo of my mom or my half siblings on her side. I used to have a little pin board of photos and my dad and stepmom went into my room in the past and removed all traces of my mom. My stepmom even said she burned the photos of my mom. What a fucking psycho. They have told me in their house they do not want to see my mom and my room is not a compromise. So of course I don't like being there. I spend 50% of my time here and know the courts won't let me stop coming and they would punish my mom if I stop and the judge told my mom she does if she does not force me to go and stay she would pay. After our last attempt a few months ago dad started telling me I don't treat my room like my room or I don't act like it's my home. She He asked me why I wanted to leave our home. On Sunday, my dad and stepmom told me I act like I'm a guest in their house instead of part of the family and that it's my home. I told them it's not my home, it's their home. I told them I can't mention my mom or keep a photo of her in my room. I can't do whatever I want with my room like they claim, so no, all of that means this was never my home. I told them I am a guest here half my life and that's all I will ever be. They told me I was being melodramatic and my stepmom called me manipulative. Am I the a-hole? Uh, not only are your feelings valid because they're feelings, but they've literally proved to you that you have zero control in this house. So why would you feel any ownership in it? Why would it feel like yours if you're not allowed to do anything in it? Like, it just makes zero fucking sense to me. No, you're not the a-hole. That would not feel like my home either. Let's see what Reddit has to say. Not the a-hole. They need to know how you feel because of what they've created. At 16, do the courts not allow you to have a say in where you spend your time? Maybe when custody was first agreed, you may not have gotten a say, but it might be worth asking your mom if it can be looked into. And have you spoken with your mom about the situation and how it's affecting you? Your dad and stepmom are creating a really negative space for you and it's not healthy absolutely agree op responds we were in court only a few months ago i do not get to decide at 16 i know many places let people my age decide but our judges are a lot more focused on making sure custody remains the same until kids are 18 that's fucking dumb 
so fucking dumb. No, you're not the a-hole. I'm sorry that you're going through this. I hope that the last two years until you're 18 go by really fast because you don't deserve to live in a situation like this. I would like to, and also how is this not parent alienation? How is this not parental alienation? I would bring that up with a lawyer immediately. I would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments and let's get on to the next story. This says, am I the a-hole for excluding a kid? That's all we get. <laughs> let's just read the story. So for background, I have a niece and two nephews I watch three days a week. I also have two kids of my own. At first, I supplied meals and snacks. My sister was to supply her son's diaper stuff. Fast forward, I told her I couldn't supply her kids meals and snacks because they eat everything in a day. So this one particular day, my kids and I ate at her house and her kids got a snack but said my daughter couldn't have any. She's two. She doesn't understand. So I asked my niece, why and she said her mom said they aren't allowed to share with my daughter i was really taken aback so we left i told my sister this was the icing on the cake and i wouldn't be providing care for her kids anymore strike one was she wasn't paying me 150 dollars a week strike two was not bringing diapers for her kids several times strike three was the snack deal now i'm not going to let any of them go without but point being i can't financially afford snacks for all these kids and all i asked was for her to supply her kids snacks most of the time they'd eat a few bites and not want the rest so it was wasted am i the evil for cutting my losses you're not excluding a kid, you're firing your sister as a client. No, absolutely not the a-hole. She is 100% taking advantage, and if you don't stand up to her, she will never stop walking all over you. Absolutely not the a-hole. Let's see what Reddit has to say. Not the a-hole. Those are all pretty significant strikes. She was taking advantage of you. I swear to you, I do not read these comments before I react. Next says, she is going to be shocked at how expensive the mistakes made were. She's getting a killer deal. Yeah, $150 a week for what, two kids? And you were not providing food, snacks, or fucking diapers? Ma'am, that's fucking ridiculous. I would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments. Don't forget, we have a playlist of almost 300 MIV whole videos up here that you can binge. Please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.